we go. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for our back to school bash. We're excited to have you. We're gonna, this is our K-5 session. So hopefully, if you're here, you teach or you work with people in kindergarten through fifth grade um, or all the grades. If you teach high school, but you want to be here anyway, we welcome you. Um, you just might have to learn more about elementary type things. Um, <laughs> my name is Nikki Bradenberg, and I'm the director of education at Montana PBS. And I was a classroom teacher for about 16 years before I stepped into this job. And I was an elementary school teacher. So I'm always in good company when I do these sessions for elementary teachers. So today we're going to do some welcome and introductions. I'll talk to you about how to earn credit for this session. We'll do a hopes and dreams activity. And then we have lots of awesome new resources to share from uh, special guests. And then we're gonna give away prizes, which is my favorite part. So if you're here and you stay till the end, you'll be added to our prize drawing to win some cool stuff. We've got um, Sesame Street socks, Oscar the Grouch socks and Cookie Monster socks, super fun. Um, we've got friction pens. I always give these away. They're super fun. And then we've got this great book by Jimmy. I never say his name right. Is it Cassis or Cassis? I can't remember. But he does a lot about building classroom community and um, start in helping um, build relationships and things with, with students. And so this is a great time of year to talk about that. So we'll give away those prizes later on in the program. So real quick, though, I want to introduce the people that are here. Uh, Eva Tickner is here. She's a member of the education team here at Montana PBS. You want to say hi, Eva? It's good to see you all. And Tracy Piltz is here from Billings. Hello. Welcome. Nice to see so many faces on this morning or this afternoon, yeah. I guess. Yeah, it's afternoon. <laughs> Why, oh, time flies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to turn off the joint and leave sounds there. All right, so the first activity, first activity we need you to do is to sign in. So if you have attended our sessions before, um, you know the drill, but I'll say it for those that might be new. You can earn OP, OPI credit for the hour of uh, being here for this session. And you do that by coming to slide three and clicking on the word here, which should open up to a Google form that you fill out with your name, role, and location. And I haven't given you the slides, but Tracy did because she's a good helper. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Yeah. Link. I'll grab the slides too. Yeah, that's the registration link that yeah. will help quite a bit. Got ahead of yeah. myself there. So yeah. There you so go. if you fill out the registration, um, you'll get an email tomorrow from me and you'll get your OPI certificate. And then you'll also have your name in the prize wheel at the end of our session today to win the fun socks and pens and a book and all that good stuff. So we'll go ahead and let you open up to that. Tracy's got slides in the chat box. So the slide three is where that Google form is, but there's the first one she shared is the one for the sign in sheet. Everybody join that. All right. All right. So this activity is a Jamboard activity. And so if you click on slide four, you can get to this Jamboard. Um, but we can also copy that link and put it in the chat box too. And the Jamboard asks you a couple of questions to get warmed up today. The first one is dreams about the school, the beginning of the school year, not your dreams for the school year. <laughs> I don't know if I'm alone in this, but usually about August 1st, I started having my back to school dreams at night. And they were always a mixture of uh, things. Usually they involved me showing up to school in a bathrobe, <laughs> um, being completely unprepared to teach a class. Um, sometimes I had a class that was really unru unruly and out of control and hanging from the ceiling. And I was yelling and shouting and screaming and no one would listen to me. So I'd have any combination of that dream <laughs> before the school year started. So if you have your own version of the back to school dream, 
or nightmare is depending on how you're describing it. Share it on this first page of the Jamboard. You can use a sticky note here or you could use a text box and tell us about that first start of the school year dream. Ah, sleeping in and missing the first day. Yep, I think that was sometimes in my dream too. Forgetting, I think that's where my bathrobe thing came. Like I think I showed up for what, like I would never leave my house in my bathrobe, but for whatever reason, I would show up in my bathrobe not knowing I was expected to be working with kids that day. Any others? And then once you've filled in that one, you can go to the second one and share any hopes that you have for the new school year. Whether it's, uh, I wanna stay more hydrated this year. Um, I think one year, my only hope was that I would not forget my lunch. Um, that was the big one. Cause where I taught and Eva taught there too, so she knows. There was really no quick running to a store or a gas station on your lunch break because we were just far enough out of town that in the amount of time you would have on a break, it was you could drive maybe to the edge of Bozeman and then you'd have to turn around and drive back. So there was no running to get food. And we didn't have a regular uh, cafeteria where you could just buy food. <laughs> so if you forgot your lunch, you just starved that day. So that was my big hope. What my last year, I think I was there was that I just remember something to eat every day. <laughs> you could just raid the goldfish, right? Your lunch could mm -hmm. be goldfish. <laughs> yep. I can't even eat goldfish yeah. anymore <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because of all the goldfish I ate mm -hmm. in kindergarten. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <sighs> Showing up with no internet and no access to your first day of school slides. Yeah, yep. I think that happened when it rained at my school. So I was constantly having no internet. We um, were, um, I was talking with our curriculum director the other day because long story, but we use a program called Clever to Roster. Mm -hmm. And that's how all of our teachers access their curriculum resources. So our ELA, math, et cetera, you go through Clever and that's how it's. So before in that weird little span of time between when they archive last year and start this year, there's like a little span of time where teachers really can't access any resources, you know, because they're not in there with the class. So my boss, the curriculum director was like, you know, this, these teachers need to be able to see their teaching materials. Like, how do we get it to them? And, you know, no internet. It's like the no internet thing. Well, you know, we can't, they're not going to be in there. You know, we can't give them all this access. And finally she said, couldn't we just hand them a book? <laughs> Never even occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> now that we're all going to be in a building together. I think we still kind Isn't of have that, that like, COVID yeah. mentality. Is that everything yeah, has I guess to be digital. That would work. <laughs> <laughs> Old school. Yeah. Next, you're going to be pulling out the overhead projector. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it was so funny. I was just sort of like, oh gosh, yep. <laughs> All right, we got some good comments, got some good hopes connecting with students and new leadership with fresh perspectives. Yes, that is all great hopes. If you think of more and you want to add them to the Jamboard, please do. It's a fun conversation to get things started. So now we're going to in depth hand it over to Eva and let her share some of the things that we have coming out or available from Montana PBS. Take it away, Eva. Hi everyone. Um, I just want to introduce myself quickly. My name is Eva Tickner. Um, I have taught school for 10 years. Um, I taught in rural schools outside of Billings and Bozeman, uh, both in combined classrooms in the fourth and fifth grade. And now I'm working for Montana PBS. And I am here today to share with you some resources that I'm really excited about, um, a project that I am working on with Montana State Parks. So, do you want to share the screen? Um, yeah. Okay, let me stop sharing. Yep, let me stop sharing and then you can take over. Um, and I see we've got Anna joining, so I'm going to give her That's some links fun. too. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the State Park Collection. Let's see, I need to minimize this too, so you can, there we go. 
Um, so State Parks of Montana is the collection that I want to share with you, um, the collection on PBS Learning Media. So if you don't already have an account, I would highly suggest that you get one. Um, this collection has really high quality uh, videos and media galleries, as well as lots of different support materials that you can use in your classrooms. Um, they're aligned to standards in Montana and nationally pre-K through fifth grade. Um, and so far we have done four Montana state parks. So you'll see over here along the left-hand side, we have Lewis and Clark Caverns, Makoshika, Flathead Lake, and First Peoples Buffalo Jump. Um, we tried to get parks in different parts of the state. Montana is a huge state. Um, hopefully there is one that you see there that is close to your area. But these are also great resources that you can use for virtual field trips. Um, if you can't get your students to the park, you can take them there through PBS Learning Media. I wanted to just show you and showcase one of the parks with you today. And we're gonna start with Lewis and Clark. So if I'm navigating to Lewis and Clark Caverns, you'll see that each one of the parks in the collection has three video resources. So it starts with an overview. This video um, just tells you about the park, um, gives kids like an orientation if they've never been there um, and little tidbits. These videos are between one and two minutes to maybe introduce the unit. We also have a video that goes more in depth about um, for this one in particular, the cave formations where you follow a class um, on a field trip through the park and then you hear from rangers about the different formations, stalactites and stalagmites, um, cave popcorn and cave bacon, and all of the different ways uh, that formations are created in Lewis and Clark Caverns. And then the third video resource that comes with every collection is called a wandering wonder. And this video here is between 15 and 20 minutes, depending on the state park. Uh, this includes really beautiful drone footage this video is not narrated, and so it just has music playing in the background. This could be something you could play in your classroom, um, maybe just during free time for students. It could get them oriented to the place um, if they are really unfamiliar with the place where the state park is. And then beyond the three videos that come with each collection, there is a media gallery. This media gallery, I'm imagining if I was using in my classroom, um, might be something that I could start the unit with where I get kids wondering about the photos that were collected from the state park. This also comes with a resource that you can use. One of the materials down here is called a notice and wonder. This comes with every one of the state park collections. Um, and it has a handout that you could give to students in your classroom, just getting their curiosity sparked, asking them what they notice about every uh, photo and what they wonder about those photos as well. I am going to head back and show you just the introduction video to Lewis and Clark, this short video, just to kind of give you an example of how engaging the videos that we've created so far are. Um, I really think that you and your students will want to use them. What's the first state park in Montana that is home to a massive underground cave and is a unique habitat for bats? Let's explore the Lewis and Clark Caverns on PBS Learning Media. As Lewis and Clark made their way along the Jefferson River in 1805, they may have camped as close as one mile away from the caverns. But even though the park shares their name, they never knew it existed. Thought to be known as a steaming mountain by Native American tribes, it's surrounded by rugged hills in the southwest part of the state. The huge cave was formed millions of years ago when water from an ancient shallow ocean flowed through the rock, leaving caverns. Today, you can tour them from May through September. Whether it's seeing the limestone caves and all kinds of wildlife, hiking, biking, or camping, 
This park has something for everyone. You can even go for a picnic and stay in a teepee or cabin. It's no wonder this park is so popular that it gets about 80,000 visitors a year. Come find some fun at the Lewis and Clark Cavern State Park. All right, so that is the introduction video that comes along with each of the state parks. And as I've mentioned already, there are other videos that go more in depth about the caverns as well as that drone footage video. Um, if you're using this collection, which I hope you are in your classrooms, if you're interested in it, there's a teacher's guide over here that will tell you about each of the videos within the collection, as well as all of the different handouts and materials that are um, supplemental for you to use with each one of the videos. So if I was using this introduction video, um, I might click over here. There's a background reading. Uh, there's a cave discovery timeline. There's a park map and a checklist if you were visiting the park with your students. And so each one of these additional resources are linked um, over there along that right hand side for you to explore and use with your students. Um, if I was using this particular um, Lewis and Clark Caverns, you also, when you click into this video here that goes more in depth into the caverns and the cave formations, have really uh, high quality handouts over here about the types of formations that you could use as handouts for your students and activities to explain to them and go more in depth about um, the dripstone and flowstone and seepstone, those different types of formations you see within the caverns. And then there's a really fun activity specifically with Lewis and Clark Caverns where you can use clay in your classroom uh, just to really gauge um, your students understanding of those different formations. So using clay um, to model those different formations. Um, I think that the resources are really high quality and I hope that you will want to use them in your classrooms. Uh, we will be continuing to develop more parks around the state. So this fall and this spring, we'll be adding to the four that we have already. Um, and I just hope that you can see some ways that you might be able to use them in your own classrooms. Awesome, thanks, Eva. Um, yeah, Shanna put a great comment in the chat box. We are really excited about the drone footage videos too. And we've had some really great um, interest and excitement from teachers about these videos, um, using them for mindfulness and using them for cool down time. Um, and that was the inspiration was we were, I walked into a early childhood, a pre-K classroom in Twin Bridges last year, and she had kids laying out on mats and um, in different stages of rest. And she was playing videos from YouTube, but um, there were these ads popping up and she kept having to run up and click to, you know, pass things and I thought gosh uh, it was a lovely video of the ocean you know but I thought gosh we can we can definitely make this the better product and I went and shared that with the team um and they were like well, we have all this drone footage <laughs> we'll set it to music and it'll be amazing <laughs> absolutely beautiful they really yeah. are awesome. yeah mm -hmm. yeah so yeah, so that's the Parks of Montana collection. Um, we hope that you'll check it out and we will be adding to it um, this over the course of the next year or so. Um, Eva is on the team uh, working with some other graduate students from MSU and from U of M. So it's a unique collaboration between the education department and the School of Film and Photography. And so um, Eva's part of the Health and Human Development Department actually, because you're in the school counseling program. Um, and then we have students from the master's program at the School of Film and Photography. And then we have a student at U of M from the education department, all getting their master's degrees. And they're uh, earning tuition waivers for working with us and then collaborating to develop these resources, which has been really great. And we haven't chosen our next park, but we will take suggestions. So feel free to sh throw them in the chat box. They have to be state parks because that's what we're working on. Um, but if you know of a great state park that you think we should add to the collection, let us know, because that would be fun to take that. 
Um, just to check in, if you need to check in and, and sign the attendance sheet, um, I think I've got the link over here. I mean, grab it and put it in the post in the um, chat box again so that you can make sure you get OPI credit for being here and so that you're in the chart prize drawing at the end. I think I have about, looks like ten, nine people who have registered and there are about 11 people here. So we might've gotten hundred percent. Tracy just disappeared. Oh, there she is. <laughs> I saw a cat and then I saw nothing and then I saw my, you. <laughs> my cat always likes to make a, an appearance. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and here we go again. Here we come. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tracy, you that's a good transition. Yes, yeah. we will. <laughs> we'll hand it over to you and the cat. Perfect. And... Yeah. Of course. You know, while Eva was sharing, he didn't want anything to do with me, but but now he wants to be right in front here. Yeah. Um, do you? I love. Do you want I, I had never seen those. Um, oh, does somebody else have a? <laughs> we have <laughs> Pompeii we have Pillar. Yeah. We've talked about Pompeii's Pillar. We do have Makoshika. There is Makoshika covered, and that was the first one we visited. It's a beautiful one. Tower Rock State Park. Okay. We'll have to check out this one. All right. We'll write these down. And in our first <laughs> team meeting, um, we can talk about it. I don't know how many more we'll add over the course of this school year. Um, but last year we were able to do, I think we did four in two years. So, um, we'll see what we could do in the next two years, but all right. Well, Tracy, if you want to share your slides and take over, yeah. we can let you. <laughs> Absolutely. Baxter wants to learn more about the state. <laughs> yes. Very interested. Um, <laughs> No, I didn't know those were there. That's the thing about, I mean, learning media is so awesome. There's so much um, there. I feel like sometimes I need to be better about searching because I kind of have found the things that I know are there and I love, and I sort of go right toward um, those resources. So I need to be better about um, searching because I'm always just sort of like blown away by how much great stuff is on there. So those are really, um, really fantastic. I'm excited about those. Um, so I'm Tracy Piltz. I've been dreaming of a, a great time to use this awesome GIF here. <laughs> and this seemed um, a, a perfect use of it. Um, I'm in Billings, like Nikki mentioned. Um, I taught kindergarten for, I think, about 12 years um, before moving into my current position, which is um, a tech integration specialist in Billings. Um, I work mostly with our kindergarten through third grade teachers and students, um, just kind of supporting them as they're using um, devices and, and digital media and ed tech tools in their classrooms. Um, Nikki and I first met and collaborated when we were both still in the kindergarten classroom. So um, I'm always happy for the opportunity to, to work with Nikki and Montana PBS and all of the awesome um, educators that join her session. So I'm happy to be here today. Um, as I was looking at this, I was even thinking what might be kind of fun, <laughs> Baxter and I were thinking, I'm going to add um, another just blank slide to that Jamboard, and I'm going to grab, oops, now where am I? Um, I'm going to grab the link really fast. As we're kind of talking about tips and tricks, I was looking at you all thinking, I bet you have lots of tips and tricks to share as well. So um, I'm just dropping a link into that Jamboard again. It's the same one you had open before. So if you still have the tab open, um, I just added a third um, little slide here. If you want to, again, just use that little sticky note or um, you can use the text tool, the text box tool here. If you have ideas, um, tips and tricks for starting the school year strong, we'd love to hear some of your um, ideas as well. I think everyone of you probably have a, a great little tip or, or something um, important that you could share on there. So please feel free to share or drop it in the chat box too. We'd love to see your ideas. Nikki reminded me, I should have put this on. Well, it's kind of on here. Start with you. My first, my top trick 
or tip should be staying hydrated. Didn't you mention that, Nikki? Just making sure you're drinking water. My very first day of teaching ever, um, kindergarten, and I was in, I had moved to Arizona. I didn't know anyone. Um, I had student taught fourth grade and then took a kindergarten position. And I, I ended up loving kindergarten, but I think my expectations were maybe way up here <laughs> and kindergarten was here and it was a rough day. And I think when my principal came to check on me at the end of the day, I was like bent over at my desk, sobbing, you know, into my lap and he kind of just backed out. And then, you know, I, I got my stuff together and, and uh, figured out what I needed to do. But the joke was always, I don't know if they were joking. I thought it was funny, but always that I was just dehydrated. So they'd always say, oh, I know you had, it was a rough day. Um, you're just a little dehydrated. You have to be sure to drink water. <laughs> so it wasn't that it was a, a rough day of teaching. I just needed to remember to drink water. So that should be my my top tip um, is to always stay hydrated when teaching. But I do think it makes a lot better. So it's not a bad tip. Um, I had a hard time kind of settling on, as you all know, there are so many things that we sort of think about and have in the back of our minds, um, really to have a great start to the year. But I um, was able to attend Seesaw, um, if you're familiar with Seesaw, has a free conference happening right now called Seesaw Connect. Um, and I was able to join some of the sessions live last week. And I don't know if any of you know Jeff Gonzalez from Cult of Pedagogy. Um, you can Google it. If you're on Twitter, it's at Cult of Pedagogy. Um, she and, and that organization shares some amazing resources, but she did a fantastic keynote. And so I'm kind of piggybacking off a few things that she shared um, in her keynote that really resonated with me. Um, a couple of things have links in here. Um, this, this top thing she said was starting with you. And I thought that that was such a great thing because we don't, right? We don't think about ourselves. We sort of leap ahead into all the um, things we need to do for our classroom and things we need to do for our students and to make our principal happy and, and to make the classroom look fantastic, you know, for, um, for open house and all those kinds of things. Um, but for us to kind of take care of ourselves first and be sure that, that we're ready and setting those boundaries and setting those limits for what we can do um, and drinking that water, I think really that that's the the best place um, to start. Um, a few other things that she mentioned that I really liked, and there's a link here in this open to feedback. Um, I thought, gosh, what a great thing to say. Um, just um, seeking out um, your own feedback, whether it's from um, your colleagues, maybe it's from parents, maybe it's from students, and just be open to always asking those questions, knowing that we can all be better. Even if we've been doing this for a hundred years, there's always something new we can learn from other people. And so I really loved that idea of, you know, not being sensitive, being open to that and kind of willing to hear that. Um, and then making those changes when it's appropriate. Maybe sometimes it's not. Um, and I think that plays really nicely into being flexible. Um, I know that my biggest moments of frustration are when I'm 100% counting on something happening and it, and it doesn't, it's totally out of my control and it doesn't happen. And it just sort of the wheels come off the bus um, and I get really frustrated. And so I think being flexible from the get-go, knowing um, that you can plan for things, but it's not always going to happen um, that exact same way. My um, second year of teaching, I moved to a new school in Arizona set up my whole classroom, started the year and a week into the school, a week or two. See, now I don't even remember. It was traumatic at the time. They said, sorry, we have two, um, our classes at the other school are too big. We're going to have to send you over to the other building. All the kids and students, our parents that I had just, you know, spent this time bonding with, I had to leave behind, pack up my classroom. Um, and it was, it was a little bit traumatic. It, it ended up being absolutely fine, but I had to learn to be really flexible because I could have let something like that ruin my whole year um, if I had, you know, really <laughs> perseverated on um, those frustrating things that began. So just kind of being open to that feedback, being open to being flexible. And I really liked 
she said, model the behavior you expect to see. And in her keynote, she talks so much about relationships. Um, kids love seeing teachers, you know, chatting with each other and having fun together and laughing together. Um, and I loved that, like not just in the classroom, I mean, we should model in our classroom what we expect from our students, but even, um, you know, not in the walls of our classroom, but as you're interacting with others and, and um, just kind of that kindness and that relationship building and friendliness and, and you know, joking um, with your, uh, your colleagues and that sort of thing. Um, that camaraderie that they see between you and those other teachers, um, hopefully your students will internalize and that will become part of your classroom and school culture as well. So I really loved um, those ideas, which of course um, go right into building relationships. We all know that um, that's such an important piece. Um, we can't start diving in um, to teaching them all of this content without sort of setting that classroom climate um, starting to, you know, get to know the students um, and, and take some interest in them. I liked this, I'm going to just kind of click on here. Um, I really like this collection um, in the, uh, the PBS Learning Media from PBS Kids. Um, when you're talking about classroom climate, um, it's all about creating a caring classroom community. And like Eva had shared, I mean, if you hadn't, if you haven't been on Learning Media before and just sort of clicked around, like as she was clicking on the park stuff, well, there's a video here and there's a handout here and there's resource guides. I mean, there's just so much stuff. So once you get to a page or a collection, really good um, over here um, all pieces of creating that community being kind being just um celebrating our differences and that diversity understanding and regulating feelings so there are tips and tricks um Oh, I just kind of think that said my connection is unstable, of course. So hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, you know, printables and handouts, um, videos, lots and lots of great things um, in this collection. And I don't think you might have already, but I can drop this. Um, oh, <laughs> I'll show you that in just a minute, Elizabeth. Good question. Um, so this is specifically, and, and it's linked in the um, in the slide deck as well. But when you talk about starting to create that climate or that, I think there's a lot of great things in here to do with your students to contribute to creating that. Um, and then the other thing um, I linked a few um, in here is just sort of those getting to know you student inventory types of things. Um, this one here linked at the top are some getting to know you printables um, from PBS. And I don't know if I click that open. Oh, I think it opened a new window, so you probably can't see it. Um, but you can click on there and see um, there's a like getting to know your teacher um, page. So you could kind of fill it out. And then um, there's a one that they could then fill out as well. Um, whether you print it, this might be a fun thing to have if you do have like a meet the teacher night or something before school, especially if you work with littles. Um, it might be something fun that the parents and students could work on filling out together and leave for you at the end of the night. Um, if you use a digital tool like Seesaw, you could put it onto Seesaw and then add your voice to it so you could read it to them and they could share their answers back. Just a way to really yourself and then um, as well kind of start getting some information about your students. Um, and then I really liked, again, this is from Jennifer Gonzalez from that cult of pedagogy. Um, this is something she shared. It's just a free resource on Teachers Pay Teachers, but you could easily create your own I know I always collected this information and like when I did it on paper, I have this nice little stack of paper, right, that told all about the kids and I put it in this cute little file folder and it sat on my desk. Um, I can't say I often pulled that file folder out. Um, and so I loved her idea here of kind of creating this inventory. Um, she had just made a spreadsheet and it just sort of shared like favorite foods, favorite games, favorite, you know, uh, 
TV shows or characters or things like that, you could make it sort of whatever is relevant to your students in your grade. And she just sort of logged it all on a spreadsheet so that she could easily pull that up see where there's a lot of commonalities, you know, that she could bring into the classroom, but then also, you know, if she's trying to make a specific connection um, with Shirley or with Chris, then she could kind of pull up some of that information and, and remember some of those things that are special to those students. So I really like that idea of being um, really intentional about gathering that information and then using that information um, in class again. And then just another example that I linked here is a Seesaw activity. Um, if, if you don't use Seesaw, this is a great digital platform. Um, it works really well with K-5 students. Um, we have a paid account here in Billings, but there's lots that you can do in the Seesaw Basic, the free account. Um, and this is just another um, great little all about me activity you could assign to your class. Um, and again, what I love is they have access to all of these tools they could use the camera, they can use the microphone, they can, you know, use the pens and draw pictures, um, just another way for them to be able to share about themselves. Um, but also a really nice way, um, if you are using a digital tools, um, what a great way to start introducing them. Oh, you just learned how to use the, the camera and you learn how to use the pen on here while also um, sharing a little bit about yourself and, and me as a teacher being able to kind of gather um, that information. So I loved sort of all of those ideas and then um, have fun. I've seen this in many places lately where remember that old saying like, don't let them see you smile until October or something like that. I've seen that lots of places lately, like, no, 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 that's not right. It's more about you know, setting those expectations and holding firm in those expectations, but also finding those um, moments of fun and those moments when um, you can laugh together and then being able to bring it back, right? When you need to bring it back um, and, and get back to, to some hard work, being able to bring it back and, and get into some hard work. But this should be fun. Um, this shouldn't be, uh, you know, something where we we feel like we have to be sort of, um, you know, stodgy, I guess, or, or crabby for months until until we really get them in line, because um, that won't be fun for you or the or the students. So hopefully, just being those those opportunities when you can laugh and have fun, um, you know, when those when those opportunities, I guess, are are there for you to be able to to let up and do that. Um, I'm going to just kind of hop over here if anybody had any tips. Let's see. I love it. Um, focus on building relationships. I like that. Hopes and dreams. Yep. And reading it through. I like that. So not just having them share it, but remembering to go back and actually read what they um, share about themselves. That's great. Point one, one person in a huge building. Yeah. That's good. Setting our boundaries, kind of knowing what our limitations are. We can't solve all the problems. I like this finding out what we have in common and uniting the class. That's wonderful. A day, gauging, bring the fun. That's fun. A day. I'm seeing a lot of really fun, like STEM lessons to start the year. And I thought, what a great, because, um, going over those routes, like they're learning, okay, this is where you have to go get those materials. Here's how you put them away. Here's how you keep things clean, but they're having so much fun, <laughs> right? Cause they're building and making and doing those things that they're probably not even thinking about where, when you're just going over this checklist of rules, right? They come home. Yeah. It was the rules day or whatever. So yeah, I love that. I'm just checking the chat really quick to see if there's any, oh, okay. The mouse. I told Elizabeth I would tell her where. So it's um my mouse that you see. Let's see. Now it's now I don't see it. This little mouse. It's an extension called, I'm in Chrome on my MacBook. It's called Custom Cursors for Chrome. So it's an extension I put into Chrome. <clears throat> I'm just using it free. There's a couple of um little pointers. Um, or I don't know, mice, mice, mouse, I don't know what you call it, um, that you can use for free if you upgrade. I don't know how much it is, but you can even like customize. You could put in your own little things that you want to 
want to use, but it is kind of fun. I started using it because I thought it was kind of fun. I was teaching um, first grade remote during the pandemic, but honestly, I think people see it better. So I've kept it because um, I do think it, it it's a little bit more obvious, I guess, on the screen. So um, custom cursor for Chrome is what that's called. Um, and these are really just links. We've kind of already looked at these, so I won't spend too much time here. Um, just sort of highlighting, I guess, four of these collections um, in PBS Learning Media. Um, this one's pretty fantastic. So again, all these are linked in the slides. You should have the slides. Um, when you pull this up, they have this whole, <coughs> excuse me, calendar. And again, when I click on this, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it. So I'm just going to um, encourage you to click on the link so that you can kind of pull it up bigger because it's opening in a new window for me. Um, but there's, you'll notice on the side, there's themes, emotions, practicing routines, getting ready for the first day of school. And then um, you'll sort of notice across here, we've got a collection, a video, a digital game, um, activity, family time, um, like a document, resource, and then ways to explore more. So um, again, all of these things that are so helpful um, for the beginning of the year, you've got all of these free resources ready for you, um, kind of planned out for you in this little back to school calendar collection here. So um, pretty fantastic. This is geared, um, again, probably more for like pre-K through second grade, but lots of, I think lots of those um, routines and SEL kinds of things can really be adapted for um, older grades. And then again, I'll just kind of click on these. Um, hopefully you have this open and you're kind of clicking and exploring at the same time. Um, but just a wonderful back to school collection here, again, with some videos. I love um, I love printables. I love like little um, posters and things like that stuff I don't have to buy or design myself um, make me really happy. So some classroom posters um, that you can find in here. And then again, you'll sort of notice the menu over here, all of that great stuff that we've talked about, those routines and transitions, um, building those relationships, um, even getting into like healthy behaviors and that sort of thing. So um, definitely click through there. And then um, this changing seasons is another one. As we, as soon as school starts, I'm ready for fall. So I'm ready for the, I'm ready for seasons to change. I love summer, but now it should be fall. Um, and I know that this is a, a way a lot of us, especially with our young learners, are um, teaching sciences with um, all of these activities and lessons about the season. So there is some really great um, stuff in here to supplement maybe what you're already doing in science, um, talking about animals, um, their habitats, how those change through the seasons, um, and some great, you know, little um, video clips and um, activities. Again, I'm just kind of scrolling any of the these that you want to look at further, you just kind of click on it. And again, um, like with the parks, uh, the state parks collection, you'll just kind of um, go through this rabbit hole where you just find more and more um, fantastic resources. So um, really, I guess I'm just sort of encouraging slash inviting you to set aside a little chunk of time. Um, these collections linked, um, this was the one I had already showed you about that um, classroom climate. These are a great place to start. And what Eva shared is a great place to start. Um, but don't, don't stop there. If you are looking for a specific topic or resource, putting in those keywords and just spending some time on that learning media site. Um, I think you'll just be really, uh, whenever I show it to teachers, they're kind of like, oh, wow, I can't believe how much stuff is here. And then it's all free for us to use. Um, I know here in Billings, I don't, we have to get special, you know, uh, approval or whatever, but this was um, easily approved by our supplemental committee to be able to utilize um, these resources in addition to the adopted curriculum that we have here in Billings because, um, you know, they just know <laughs> that PBS always has such high quality stuff. So um, just sort of an invitation here for you to spend some time um, either exploring one of these collections or um, just doing a little search and, and finding some other great things that you can use in your classroom. Yay, that was awesome. Thank you, Tracy. I'll stop sharing. Yeah, so um, 
Yeah, I love the idea, the spreadsheet idea. I think it's really a, an interesting idea that you would have all that data that you collect from parents and students, and then you could sort your columns depending on, you know, common interests and very easily be able to see how many kids were interested in different things. So I, I think that's a great idea. So thank you for sharing all of that. Does anybody have questions before we move on or anything you want to ask Tracy before we move on? It says thank you. That's awesome. Yes. Grab the okay. sharing back here. So I have a few more things to share. Tracy shared a lot of our primary things. Um, and so if you teach in the upper elementary, we had a few things that I thought could be good for those uh, third, fourth, fifth grade teachers out there. Um, again, this is all free on PBS Learning Media. This collection called Indigia Genius is uh, created by the New Mexico PBS station. Um, and it, it combines scientific and culture impact with um, Native American traditions. So it's really cool. It's a very contemporary piece. Originally a digital series on YouTube, but then um, adjusted a little bit to be on PBS Learning Media. All of these take uh, things that were indigenous practices by Native American tribes and talking about, you know, how they work and how they're still used today in contemporary society. So the adobe brick, jerky, um, hand signs for communication, drum making, um, these are all quick, they're under five minutes, just maybe a little over five minutes. Um, and then like cosmetics, kind of a fun one. All of these have, again, a teaching tips, additional reading resources, a suggested activity, and other video resources, and then some other activities that go along with it. Um, these videos have a transcript attached, so you can go through and read it beforehand or share it to kids who need that kind of um, accessibility. And you could download these. So um, not all videos on PBS Learning Media can be downloaded, but some of them can. And those that can, that means if the internet does fail you, you could download it, on, download it on a flash drive and still use it that way. And remember, everything in Learning Media can be shared to Google Classroom using this quick shortcut right here. The other great one is But Why, a podcast for curious kids. Um, podcasts are just sort of rising in popularity as another way for kids to take in content. I think of my listening center in the first uh, decade I was teaching where I had this gigantic tape player with headphones that were really big and covered the sides of their heads and the spiral cord that they were sort of tethered to. <laughs> And they went all, and I had a splitter that I got from Radio Shack so that four kids could listen at the same time. And we listened to cassette tapes that had the little scholastic book that went along with it. Well, now in this lovely day and age that we live in now, um, we can share these podcasts that have no boxes that I accidentally step on, you know, and crack. Um, and they can be shared in Google Classroom. They can be listened to on uh, various devices. And these are all wonderful things that you might like, weather, um, skyscrapers, dictionary, and it's all created from the idea that kids are going to say, but why? But why do we do that? Um, this is a cool one because it, it kids are involved in the production. They're involved in the, um, the selection of topics, and they're also involved in the podcast itself. So it's a fun one for kids to listen to because they, they feel like it's focused more on them when it's kid voices. And then the last one is called the A to Z Career Lab. Um, career education is becoming something that isn't just, let's learn about firefighters and police officers. Let's expand that conversation to include a variety of careers. And let's start talking about careers at the youngest, in the youngest classrooms. Um, so that kids, if they can see it, they can be it. So this is a really cool collection uh, from A to Z. Um, pick a letter and there is a career that starts with that letter. Lots of ways you could use this. I mean, I was elementary, so obviously I'm like, oh, letter of the day. We're going to use this to like talk about the letter of the day or the sound of the week or whatever we're working on. If kids are going to do their own research, this is a good place to start. All of these videos are between three and six minutes long. 
some of these things, I was like, I don't know what that is. And this will be a really great way for me to learn what a petroleum engineer does um, or what a workforce development specialist does, um, goes into all of these um, zoologists. And they're not your, your typical you know, teacher, librarian, firefighter careers. There's a lot of content out on those careers. So this is a fun one. This first one is just a quick one minute overview describing this collection and why it was created. And then everyone, when you open it up, has support materials to go with it, which is a using this resource uh, document that you can go through. It's kind of a one pager that um, takes a real person who has that job and has them describe in kid language what the job is. And I mean, let's teach them not to get stuck on the salary piece though, because we know that's gonna be different no matter where, no matter where they are, um, but it's a good place to start. So those are three resources um, that you can also check out on PBS Learning Media to take your um, students into the new school year. And then I have a few other things to share and then we'll give away prizes. Um, this Cyber Chase Mobile Adventures in STEM, if you are in Billings on Saturday morning, uh, Tracy and I are going to be at the library. If you have kids ages five to eight, um, bring them along. And we're going to be talking about this family texting program, families, but we've had teachers sign up for this too and use the activities with their students and in after school programs and things like that. So all you have to do is open your smartphone, uh, put in the number 30644, and then in the message of the text message, text Montana. And then you have signed up for a, a period of six weeks. You will you can bring your nine and seven-year-old. Yes, we're not checking ages at the door. <laughs> That's just a, a broad spectrum of age ranges. We'll, we'll take kids who are enthusiastic about STEM. Nine and seven is perfect. <laughs> um, you'll get six weeks of messages uh, from the Cyber Chase program. There'll be a video. There'll be an activity you can do as a family, and then a way for you to share your learning from that activity, either back through the text messages, or we have a closed Facebook group that you can add things. It's easy stuff like make something out of recycled materials or go on an energy walk and count how many sources of your energy are in your house or in your neighborhood. Um, just really fun, accessible activities that promote STEM learning with elementary students. Um, and like I said, we'd love for teachers to get involved in this and do these things with your students too. And share this with your families um, as you're meeting students on the first day of school or the back to school night or drop off your school supplies. The first part of the year is when everybody's really enthusiastic about learning. So let's just like grab onto that <laughs> and do everything that we can um, share this with them. You can project this slide um, or I have a digital flyer. I can email you later if you think you'd like to share it with families that way too. Um, and then we've got a few professional development things for you to write down and plan for. Um, first of all, we've got the Montana PBS Watch and Learn Professional Development. Um, and maybe some of you have participated in this already. Uh, we have a catalog of Montana PBS films that you can watch. And then each of them is paired with a reflection activity that if you fill out the activity, you can earn OPI credit um, for this asynchronous activity. So you can watch the film, fill out the Google form, and then I'll email you the credit. Um, this slide right here links to the Watch and Learn catalog. And we've got films for most every content area, starting with our Hiding in Plain Sight, the film about mental illness. Um, Ivan Doig, which is a film about an author and writing in English language art. Mavericks is about ski racing. Um, slope, slope style skiing, and it really gets into um, braver grit and perseverance and working hard for things that are important to you. Higgins Ridge is about smoke jumpers um, and about a, a heroic fire that some Montana smoke jumpers survived um, and lived to tell about it. Indian Relay is a contemporary film about the sport of Indian Relay. Uh, that follows uh, some teams in Montana and in Idaho um, competing in the Indian Relay. Keeping the Barn is a historical doc histori Montana historical documentary about barns in Montana and the stories of those barns um, and the families who own the barns. 
uh, once you watch this, all you'll see is barns. You leave your house and you'll just see a barn everywhere. And you'll think, why didn't they put that barn in the film? Um, and there are just too many barns to put in a film. <laughs> That's why. But they're everywhere. We have some great resources to go with that film. Plain for the World is another Indian education for all film about the um, Fort Shaw girls basketball team getting to go to the World's Fair um, and, and what that meant for the girls at that, that time. And then finally, the last artifact is about measurement, and it's about the redefinition of the kilogram, which doesn't sound interesting um, until you watch the film. And they do a really good job of investing you from the beginning in how these teams of scientists are going to come up with another way to define the kilogram that is not a physical object. So all very fascinating. Most films you can earn about two OPI credits for watching the film and completing the Google form afterwards. All you have to do is fill out this form um, and it tells me what films you want to watch. And then I send you an email with the links and everything. This is all asynchronous, there is no deadline. This is gonna be open throughout the school year. Um, you can do it at your leisure. Most of these films are available right now online to watch, except for Ivan Doig and Mavericks. They're both, those links are very private. And we ask that you not, when we share them, that you not share them with others. Um, those films are still being taken to festivals and things. And so they can't be made public while the teams are doing that. Um, and then, our media literacy certification online cohort is open. Um, we have a cohort of teachers that every school year work to become PBS media literacy certified. Tracy has gone through that program. Tracy, do you want to just real quick talk about that experience? Um, yeah, this is a great program. Um, doing it through Montana PBS and with Nikki is awesome because you are a part of the cohort. And so you have teachers to kind of um, share ideas with, as well as earn some OPI credit. But um, we did it with a group of um, teachers here in Billings, and it really was a great learning experience. I liked that you kind of had to do a little bit of research, learn about something, and then create something um, to kind of show, you know, what you'd learned. Sometimes do it in the classroom with your students. Sometimes it was just a resource that you created and then um, would submit. So I liked that it was learning, but you were also kind of creating materials that you'll be using um, in your classroom with your students as well. Great. So yeah, the link to join our cohort is there. and You can message me with questions. Um, we've got some workshops coming up in November about the American Buffalo, which is another Ken Burns film coming out. Um, so keep, stay tuned for more about that. And I know some of you have joined us for the Hiding in Plain Sight workshops. We will have another series of those starting in January as well. All right, prize time. I know that some of you have been going, when will I be able to earn the PBS socks? So we're going to get to that part of the program. I've got the wheel of names here. If you don't see your name on the wheel, tell us very quickly in the chat box. Um, and I can add it to the wheel, but if you filled out the form, the sign-in form, uh, you should have your wheel here. So I've got uh, four pairs of socks to give away, some Big Bird and some Oscar the Grouch and some Cookie Monster, pretty nice. They're very soft socks. They're not the kind that stick to your toes if you put them on. Um, and then I, like I said, I've got the pens, the friction pens, and then Culturize by Jimmy Cassis. So we'll start with the socks. And we're like I said, we're gonna give away four pairs. So the first four names, we'll get some Sesame Street socks. Let's see who's getting some. Looks like Chris is getting some. All right, socks there, you're welcome. Let's see who's getting another set of socks, like Elizabeth. Getting some socks, all right. Good, two more. Looks like Shanna, you're getting some socks. Thank you, Appreciate You're welcome. It. Of course. I have I have the big bird ones from a couple of years ago, just 
So, you know, that's right. We <laughs> gave those away at Sesame Street. Yeah. yeah Sesame thank Street you so Sesame. much. <laughs> we'll try not to give you big bird ones. These are Bert. So maybe oh, we'll give you. Okay. Yes. We can. Oh, I see. <laughs> you might get Bert. Like, <laughs> the kids at school are like, why are you wearing big bird? <laughs> I know. We I do can. have big bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank I think you. we have some Elmo over here too. All right. Nice. So one more pair of socks going here. Looks like Bethany. We get another pair of you get socks. All right, your chances of winning a prize in this session are pretty good, I'd say. All right, and now we've got pens. Next one. Elizabeth. To write down my last names on this. We have two Elizabeths in here. All right, pens. And then the last one, we have Culturized by Jimmy Cassis. Let's see. Shirley, you are getting the book. All right. And Marcia and Christine, never fear. You will get fun packages with surprises in them, too. <laughs> All right, I have one more request of you before you go, and if that is um, filling out our exit survey. Um, as I always say, we, we do these things for free because of uh, grants and donors who give us um, generous donations to do things for teachers. And so when we have your feedback, it helps us make the case that these, this is worthwhile. Um, so if you'll fill out this exit survey very quickly to share your feedback, uh, this helps us to do this again. We'll be having another workshop next week, same time, but the focus will be for grades six through 12. And we'll be joined by Linda Roth, who is the 2020 Montana Teacher of the Year. And she's in Baker, Montana. She's a science teacher. And so she has a lot of really great science and STEM learning things to share with everybody. If you don't teach six through 12, you're still welcome to join us. We're not gonna be taking ID in anyone at the Zoom room. Um, but if you don't teach 612, <laughs> you don't have to come either. We will are recording. We did record this one, and I'll share the recording with you in an email later on. Um, and we will record next week as well so that you can get the information. So thank you so much for coming, and we wish you all the best in your new school year. Tracy, Eva, thanks for sharing it with us today. Thanks for having me. Happy yeah. back to school, everyone. <laughs> All right. Happy back to school, everybody. Enjoy the new school year. We'll see you next time.